back on time after the lunch break. You all win a prize for that. Sweets in front of you. I am here happily to present about the Orange Book. I do want to mention that there are a couple of other people, a uh, few other people that are going to follow me to talk about um, extremely important topics in the generic drug space. The topics are referencing approved drug products and ANDA submissions by Susan Levine. And my colleagues Elizabeth Friedman and Beth, Beth Goldstein will be talking about B2 versus ANDA submissions. And I'll talk, I'll refer to um, one of the other people uh, throughout my presentation. In terms of what I'll talk about today, of course you know it's on the Orange Book, but what about the Orange Book? The first is going to be a broad overview of the history of the Orange Book, why it came in, in, into existence, the background behind what it contains, and then I'm going to talk about some of the key aspects of the Orange Book. This is going to go through the drug product listings, what key components are within the drug product listings as well. And then the third large component I'll talk about today is the patent and exclusivities, also known as marketing protections, that are listed in the Orange Book. In terms of the background around which the Orange Book came into existence, this was, it harkens back to the 1970s, and I'm not a history buff by any means, but I do want to talk about this because it's, in, um, it's crucial to the Orange Book history. During the 70s, there was a period of inflation in the American economy, and the president and other uh, states were struggling to make formularies to try to encourage drug substitution to contain the drug inflations. Uh, to, and, sorry, to contain the drug, the drug pricing costs. And in terms of this, the agency, the FDA, recognized that there was a use in creating one list that consolidated all of the drugs that were mandated as safe and effective by the agency, as well as substitutability information. Right now, as it stands, the Orange Book is a mandated list of safe and effective drug products that were approved under 505 C and J of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. In 1979, the Orange Book proposed rule came out, and then in 1980, on a fateful day, October 31st, the approved drug products with therapeutic equivalence evaluations was born. So on that October 31st, 1980 date, that long title of this list was then nicknamed to the Orange Book because it was Halloween. So since 1984, the Hatch-Waxman Act, the Hatch-Waxman Amendments mandated this list into the FDNC Act. In addition, the key component for the Orange Book, this list, is that there is substitutability information, which I'll go into further in my presentation. The available formats of the Orange Book are three. The first is the print version, which you can actually download th from the Orange Book website as a PDF. It's about 1,500 pages, so please don't rush to print it. And there is also an Orange Book website. This is the easiest and uh, most updated way to access the Orange Book information. This is updated on a daily basis with generic approval, uh, the ANDA generic approval information, as well as patent updates. It's completely searchable. You can search by application number, even applicant, dosage form, patent number, many different fields. The third is an Orange Book app. This was one of the first apps that was available, um, that was made available by the FDA and it is download, downloadable for free as well. This is updated on a monthly basis. The key sections, or the anatomy, I like to say, of the Orange Book, they are in this slide. This is in reference to the print version of, of the Orange Book. The first is the Orange Book preface. You might say, okay, well, you know, it's a preface, it's not that important, is it? But I would, I would say, in this case, the Orange Book preface is containing some of the most key information about the background of the Orange Book, as well as important reference information for you um, about therapeutic equivalence and various other definitions and information. 
The next is drug product lists. The drug product lists are the meat of the orange book, uh, or vegetables if you're vegetarian. The active section of the orange book contains prescription and over-the-counter products. And then the discontinued section um, are also contained in a separate section in that print version of the orange book. And then the last which I mentioned before is the marketing um, protections, patents, and exclusivities. Now the key things that I'll cover in these drug product lists are four different sections, and they're therapeutic equivalents, reference listed drug, reference standard, and then something about marketing that I want to mention as well. This concept, therapeutic equivalence, is arguably the most important concept in the Orange Book. This is therapeutic equivalence. The TE codes in the Orange Book indicate substitutability between products. This is generally what you can say is going to drive down the price in the market because if there are many therapeutically equivalent products, then you can argue that drug prices will be able to go down. This snapshot shows an example of therapeutically equivalent products. On the, in the middle, under the proprietary name, you can see Fioraset with coding there, and then there are two lines above it. To the very, very right, you'll see the TE code AB. So those three products are therapeutically equivalent to each other. And I'll go into how you use these codes in the next couple of slides. Now, what is therapeutic equivalence? The shorthand for this, and I'll describe each of these abbreviations in this slide, but the fun mathematical easy equation is TE equals PE plus BE for the same use. What is PE? Pharmaceutical equivalence is PE. And this is essentially when you look at the two drugs in front of you, what, uh, what do they look like? Do they have the same active drug ingredient? Do they have the same dosage form, route, strength, among other things? The next is bioequivalence. This is a key concept for the ANDA applications. This is the absence of a significant rate and extent of how the drug is absorbed in the body or at the site of the action. And then the third, which may sometimes be missed but is also crucial, is the same use concept. So are these two drugs, do they have the same clinical effect and safety profile under those conditions of use in the labeling? If you meet all of these, then you can get, then this is the eligibility for a therapeutic equivalence code. And of course, you can always reference 21 CFR 13.3b for the full definitions of these. In terms of what codes, what letter codes there are, there are two large buckets, and then they will be up to three letters in total. So the first letter is either A or B. The A ratings mean that they are therapeutically equivalent and they may be substituted. The AB rating is the most common, and that essentially means that there were potential BE issues that were resolved with testing. There are other A-rated codes such that are dosage form specific, such as AP for parenterals, AN for nasals, etc. And then the second bucket is the B ratings. These are the ones that if you see them in the orange book, it means that there was insufficient data to evaluate them to be therapeutically equivalent. So they're not recommended for substitution. And the BX is the most common here. I mentioned a third letter. For the pharmaceutically equivalent products, if there are multiple products that are pharmaceutically equivalent and have you know, two different RLDs, but they're pharmaceutical equivalents, then there might be a third letter added to it. I won't go too much into that, but there is information in the preface to explain the three letter codes further. Now, the next two slides are on the reference listed drug and the reference standard, and I definitely want you guys to stay on the edge of your seats for the next presentation for the in-depth and very in interesting and informative information that's contained in Susan's presentation. The broad overview is that the RLD is what the applicant, the applicant wants to seek approval for that they need to refer to for their listed drug. And then in the orange book, there's a snapshot here to show the RLD has its own designated column in the orange book. 
And same thing for the reference standard. Um, it is designated in its own column in the orange book. This is what the applicants will conduct their in vivo bioequivalence studies against. So this is also a really important concept that will be um, explained in detail in the following presentation. There is a draft guidance that corresponds with the title of the next presentation that came out in 2017 of January called Referencing Approved Drug Products and ANDA Submissions. In terms of how the Orange Book selects a reference standard, these are general rules. So the word generally is there twice for a reason. And they're generally assigned to the highest strength. If there's a, a, an NDA approval that has multiple strengths, then this is where that's applied. There are exceptions to this. For example, if there are safety concerns with testing immediately on the highest strength, that might be one reason, one of the examples, that that might not be immediately assigned to the highest strength. The second is, generally, the RLD is going to be the RS as well. However, because the RS needs to be available for testing, if the RLD is moved to the discontinued section is, and is unavailable in the market, a new reference standard needs to be selected. In that case, a market leader is generally going to be reassigned as the next the new reference standard. And then the next point I want to highlight is that there is a new guidance that came out called Marketing Status Notifications under 506I of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. This is a draft guidance that was issued this earlier this year and discussed the notifications of marketing status updates. This is important for the agency to provide timely updates to the Orange Book if you're um, if your product is withdrawn from sale, for example, or not available for sale, and, or if there is commencement of marketing of a product. All of these hyper, are hyperlinked, so if you click on it, it'll take you to the guidance where there's more information here. And then the last bucket of information I want to talk to you about today is patents and exclusivity. In terms of the patents listed, there are a specific subsection of types of patents. The Orange Book lists drug substance, or the active ingredient, drug product, or the formulation, and method of use patents, or indication. The Form 3542 is used to compile, the sponsor compiles this information and submits the Form FDA 3542 to the agency with certain required information for those types of patents to be listed in the Orange Book. The Orange Book's role is ministerial in these patent listings. These forms are required to be submitted after approval of the original NDAs or their subsequent supplements. And of course, as I mentioned, the forms are necessary as standardization to make sure that all the information that the agency needs is on file for listing in the Orange Book. This is a snapshot of the Orange Book patent listings. As you can see, there's a separate column for each of those types of patents, drug substance, drug product, and method of use. You'll see some little dots and underlines under those use, those U codes, that's the patent use codes. And that just means that if you hover over those hyperlinks, it'll spell out the entire use code of that patent. Then exclusivities are divided into two types, and all of these are listed in the Orange Book as well. The NDA exclusivities are listed here. I won't read them out. The one that I want to highlight is the new clinical investigation. That's in reference to the three-year Hatch-Waxman exclusivities. This can include varying types of those three-year exclusivities. It includes new dosage form, new route, um, new indication, new dosing regimen. Those all fall under this new clinical investigation code. The orphan, there was a question on the agenda about what changes to the Orange Book have been made recently. And one of those changes is that now the orphan exclusivities that are listed in the Orange Book do have the codes attached to it. So similar to how those use codes were listed, that if you hover over it, you can see the whole code listed out. Now the orphan codes have numbers, and when you hover over it, you can also see the entire code. The pediatric and gain exclusivities are also listed. 
And then the ANDA exclusivities, these are in reference to the two types of 180-day exclusivities that are in the orange book. This is a snapshot example of an exclusivity listing in the orange book. The way that you get to this is that you need to navigate to the product and then click onto the product number and it'll take you to patents and exclusivities. And in summary, the orange book is a mandated list of drug products that are approved under 505C and J of the FD&C Act. It is a critical, it plays a criti critical role in showing substitutability between the generic products and their innovators. And it is the determinative, the definitive source of TE, RS, RLD information and marketing protection information. And I look forward to receiving any questions that you have during the panel in about an hour. Our contact information is here. If you have any questions that are for the Orange Book, we have a website here. Um, we also have a mailbox. The website, it takes you to the searchable link for the Orange Book. If you go to the additional resources section, it takes you to the preface, the PDF version of the Orange Book, our FAQs, and a wealth of other information. Thank you very much for your time.